Thank you so much. Oh, good. Thank you. So, hello, it's a bit. Will you please stand up? Because, not for me, but for yourself. We stand in so long time sitting very poor for your concentration. Now turn around twice and say hello to your neighbor because it's a bit of a play. thinking anyhow, otherwise it's quite impossible to do so. Okay. Thank you very much. Sit down. Good idea. Because we then go on. Great. Yeah, I think it's a bit more than 20 minutes. I uh, try because yesterday I had less time. But sorry. Good. Good morning. I was uh, very, very much impressed by the last speech of uh, Ingrid. Irene. Irene. Oh, Jesus. Yes, that's hereditary to change names. My father names my, his daughter, his sister, and so we do that in the family. We change names without having arguments for it. But that's not my speech. I was uh, very impressed by Irene because uh, she says rightly, don't give a diagnosis. And that means you don't have, you should not accept a diagnosis. And that's where I'm talking about when I'm talking about how to solve the schizophrenia problem. I also like to uh, congratulate those who took the initiative and organized this conference in times of crisis. But that made people also very creative, if I have seen this program and all you here. So it has a positive sense towards it as well. It's great to have the discussion about the emancipation of hearing voices movement in your classical cultural country. This fits with the atmosphere in which we like to emancipate hearing voices. Um, I would like to discuss with you how to solve the schizophrenia problem. Now I have to find out where I get uh, the second. Where is that? When I enter, is it that? No, that one? That one, thank you. I'm, I'm a bit stupid in that sense. There are more sense than that. I suppose, but. Okay, no trouble. What is the scripture order? But she is a bit hurrying up. One back. Okay. What is the schizophrenia problem is the lack of scientific validity of the illness and the denial of the meaningfulness of the separate symptoms, which go together and makes it impossible to solve the problems of the person. Their lack of scientific validity, I just selected to do a lot of, uh, some research already from the 1970s, but there are many, many more. Only the last one here I uh, refer to here, Jan Dirk Blom, which is a Dutch psychiatrist, Peculiar wise, he studied firmly and very intensely the, schizo the, <coughs> the validity of schizophrenia and came to the conclusion that schizophrenia is a hypothetical construct with zero validity. The strange thing is that also here he still uses that diagnosis. But that is the trouble we are not acknowledging that psychiatrists don't know what to do else. So we can be angry with them, but they just don't know how to solve the problem. Because that is what Einstein once said, you can't solve a problem using the same kind of reasoning that has created the problem. And what is the reasoning with schizophrenia? That the symptoms are used to construct the illness. 
So when they see person hearing voices, they easily identify that with schizophrenia. Surely when there is also a delusion or a, pers a very personal belief combined with it and social retreat, then they think there is a combination of symptoms which is the reason to make a diagnosis. So in normal healthcare, you have a complaint and then you look what may be the origin of that complaint and the origin with the complaint together makes the diagnosis. Psychiatry does something different. They take the symptoms and that was what hindered Petsi Haga in the beginning, I told yesterday, because they just construct an illness. What will solve the problem is to focus on the separate symptoms. Schizophrenia as an illness, as an illness entity means the symptoms are the consequence of the illness. But this has no empirical basis and makes a solution impossible because you don't analyze the background of the symptoms. There is also not any empirical basis for the relationship. When with schizophrenia, there is no reason why the person hears voices. There's no relationship to that. It's a word on one side, but they can't tell you that because that diagnosis, you hear voices because of some interaction between the two. This just not there. It's a hypothetical conclusion, but it's not true. This is the same why the person is paranoid or has a delusion, also no empirical basis for this relationship. And the third, why the person retreats from social contacts has no uh, empirical relation either. So I would say as a theory, there is an independence between the symptoms, they are called schizophrenia symptoms or psychotic symptoms, and the diagnosis. <clears throat> they are independent of each other, and the experience themselves are meaningful and related to emotional problems. They are not a consequence of illness, but can lead to illness and they have a life of their own. It's not in relation with illness. Hearing voices has a line of life of its own, and there is interaction with the other symptoms, but that is, which I come to soon, on a different basis. So there are four theories, or four, no, four research results that underpin this independence theory. First of it is that the general population surveys have shown that about 4% of the general population knows the voice hearing, the hearing voices experienced by themselves. So it's not a seldom because there are most of them, there are more people who hear voices and are not becoming ill than people who become a patient with this experience. Many, many more. So we are, the illness concept discriminates millions of people who hear voices because 4% of the world population is about 200 million because in general it is still seen as a sign of madness. So we not only have to change the professionals because they are also a minority but we have, uh, also have to change the general ID about hearing voices and the public thoughts. Because every time if somebody says he hears voices, there's a big chance the other will say, oh, that's a symptom of schizophrenia. So this has had much influence, but still it's a lie. The, the second uh, research results coming from uh, Trauma research. Childhood adversities like sexual abuse, physical abuse, emotional neglect and bullying have been shown to augment the chance of developing psychosis about eight times. And that is uh, that the most re uh, recent publication is from Farese and all in the Schizophrenia Bulletin. 
So it's wonderful that that bulletin has taken because it is a very good piece of research. 2012, in the, uh, in the early summer. Okay, but that doesn't. Childhood trauma has been shown to be of causal influence on developing hearing voices, and that was studied by Reed et al. when it looked at 308, no, 118 studies in the literature. So you see, that's the third. The, no, the third is the brain scan research, the research argument. While a person hears a voice, different centers light up in brain scan research. One positive thing is that there is really happening something in the brain. So it is really heard, the voice. When people hear voices, that is a reality. Now, we knew that already sometime, but when I met uh, Patsy Hagen, I had not the slightest idea. You hadn't that brain scan research, but also we just hadn't thought about these possibilities. We just thought it was fantasy, and still a lot of people think it's a fantasy. This effect of brain scan research is that the same centers are lighting up in voice here, voices with patients as with non-patients. This the effect is the same in hearing voices with voiceers who did not become, I did not make a good thing here. Oh, uh, this good, this became voices as with voiceers who never became voices. And that our study from Aleman in Groningen, that's the north of Holland, but it is repeated by now, but the, the nice thing is that it's also the same with all kinds of voiceers having got different diagnostic uh, labels. So the hearing voices in that, in brain sense, is just living their own lives also. It's independent of an illness because you can't have any effect of schizophrenia on, this, on the brain research. Nobody knows anything about it. Then what our research then did was to show that there are direct links between, between voice characteristics and voice hearer problems. So it's not just a vague, <coughs> a vague relationship, but it's quite an empirical relationship. You really can, um, by interviewing the person, with voices, you take each separate voice and interview about the characteristics of that separate voice. And then you find a relationship between the different voices and different problems with the voice hearer. So I'd like to give some examples. Each of the voice can indicate the relationship with the age, the sexual or physical abuse has started. But it can also be that the age is the age it ended. Or that the, 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 the links are personal. There is not a general thing. But there is a personal relationship and the age of the voice most when related to, let's say, sexual abuse, then you mostly see that that age, that voice doesn't grow in age. So a person of 30 will still have a voice of seven who indicates that at seven, and she will tell you at seven, the, uh, the uh, sexual abuse started. The same, there are other links like what triggers the voices might be the same what triggered, for instance, the bullying. Because you often hear that people who are bullied over a longer time carry the voices still with them from the people who were bullied. And there are many, many, many links, and therefore I'm very happy. Let's take it, this, you can read that, I can't. But this is the translation of living with voices into Greek, and we have to thank very much Lichurkos and his friend Stephanos, two psychiatrists who have been busy in translating this book. I would advise you, because it's especially hopeful for voice hearers, because there are 50 
stories of recovery described by the voiceers, the interviewed by others to get it each story on about four pages because when there is a book some people like to tell a lot and that's very interesting but for a book you have to reduce that but it's very very inspiring and giving hope so it's very very interesting to buy Christmas giving all the you known voiceers this book that's this very nice idea for you and the voiceers and for the translators I suppose too but in times of crisis they have to sell these books anyhow and it's it's nicely done and you now know the title write it down I would say because otherwise you might forget it because mostly people forget everything when they go away from a, a conference meeting they have only small things so I hope this this uh, conference will take home with you the fact that psychiatry is lying about the diagnosis but that interaction between hearing voices delusions and the interaction between paranoia and voices and social retreat are of another origin the delusions are mostly used to explain the reason why a person say it are gods might be different for one person to another but he could explain to you why he thinks it are gods for instance as example they might be gods because they know everything about the person which in itself is uh, reasonable because it is the person who hears the voices but this kind of relationship are not easily made when you are convinced you hear voices you cannot deny that but you try and find out why these characteristics of the voices give them the idea that they are gods so you accept the uh, explanation but there's always a reasoning per, a part of the mostly a very intense reasoning part you have heard that from Irene how intense the interaction can be between the development of a person and the expressions of his problems the paranoia can be a consequence of traumatic experience as well and especially we meet that a lot with being bullied also also others but with the being bullied people are more par paranoid you could say to the circumstances in which they also now live because in the the circumstances when people gossip about each other a, a person who has been bullied will be earlier having the idea that it's they are gossiping gossiping about him or her the social retreat is also can be a result of disturbing voices because if you really know how disturbing voices can be while they are talking to you in a group you would not be uh, it, it would be not a pleasure to go in a group so it's quite sensible why people retreat when these voices are coming up in situations with other people around so a lot of voices don't feel well in in uh, in a group of people around that are all kind of relationships and that is also what psychiatrist just denies psychiatrist confuses voices in fact it is first of all seen as a symptom of an illness which is is not calling hearing voices a psychotic symptom means a meaningless experience while it has great significance in the life of the voiceer and knowledge of this significance by the voiceer opens the way to recovery so how to solve this problem anoixis a uh, association of uh, people diagnosed with schizophrenia in holland has changed the name into psychosis susceptibility syndrome now we might hope the next step should be that they all recognize the personal susceptibility still now they are looking for a general susceptibility but i think that can be the case also that we that there are more stress uh, stress related uh, for persons is more sensible sensitive for stress but that's always combined with personal like also uh, Irene explained 
this, this is always combined with the personal experiences which make you personally susceptible for your personal behavior. So then there is only the need for a personal diagnosis of the person's problems. And with that, you have solved the schizophrenia problem. Besides, it doesn't exist. It also gives you a wrong idea about the reality. And that is not hypothesis. That could, is well recognized in these four research sites, which I called the epidemiological, 4% in the population hearing voices being no patients, the people, uh, the 4%, the, uh, the background of, um, of traumatic experiences, the lighting up of the brain, and the links which you can find in this book with the persons, the different the separate voices. So people don't hear voices, they hear different voices. And each of these voices are to be analyzed and discussed. So it is an interesting job, not a simple job, I think. But it takes time, and that is one of the things that's necessary when you would make a relationship with a person hearing voices, you need time. And all these institutes have natu natural rules which are not fitted with this, but I don't go into there. I think the best thing is to read this book and thank Lichurgos and Stefanos, and that was what I like to tell you. All the story, not alone about this book, but also that schizophrenia just does not exist. Thank you.